can I really monetize my YouTube channel in 90 days? You may have seen some YouTube videos of creators creating a 90 day monetization challenge for themselves. April Lynn is the most popular one right now and will probably come up on top if you do a search. It worked for her, but will it work for me? Will it work for everybody? I did some research into it, and I'll share that in this video. And I'm also going to start my own 90-day monetization challenge. I figure I gotta try this out for myself. My name is Joe, and this is my channel, Off Grid Solitude. Please like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps out the channel. Monetization is the first major goal for new YouTubers. And the requirements are 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. And when you reach this benchmark, you can apply for revenue sharing. You'll get a small cut of the money that YouTube makes off the ads shown during or before your videos. At first, though, the profits might be 30 cents a day. You know, 1,000 subscribers is still a pretty small channel. But that isn't all there is to it. Don't think it's all about greed. There are other features for creators that YouTube doesn't unlock until you hit that benchmark. For example, tagging other creators in a video. And there are a bunch of other things that you don't even know exist until you need them. So it's really nice to hit that monetization threshold. Every YouTube channel grows in its own unique way. Some grow in spurts with a few hit or viral videos. Others slowly grind their way up over months or even years. And some of them don't even care about growing. But for those that do, faster is better, right? And so to speed up the growth and to keep themselves accountable, some YouTubers create a 90-day monetization challenge for themselves. I've watched as many of these challenges as I can find to see what they're really all about. I've noticed a few trends, and I'll share some examples here that demonstrate them. The first example is April Lynn. She is by far the most popular, but might not be the best example. In some ways, her 90-day challenge is very typical, but in other ways, it's very untypical. Her initial setup of the challenge is the same as most people. The first step is just to declare your intentions and motivations. Next, the plan is developed. Usually, the plan is to publish more frequently, maybe two or three times a week. Getting monetized in such a short time usually happens because of one or more breakout or viral videos. These videos don't get millions of views or anything like that, but they're much more successful than the typical video that that channel usually gets. So you can almost think of it as winning the lottery, or at least a scratcher ticket. So the thinking goes that buying more lottery tickets increases your chances of winning, right? So publishing more videos increases your chances of that video going viral. Consistency is also important too. Long breaks between uploads usually costs viewers. People get bored and wander away. Or maybe the algorithm just forgets about you. So extreme consistency is the next part of the plan. And the third part of the plan is accountability. Uploading a progress video once a week, tracking stats and things like views and new subscribers. And maybe a look back on how the YouTuber thought they did obstacles overcome, successes, failures. That's the typical path to these 90-day challenges, but April Lynn did not do that. She started off that way, 
But then she took about three weeks off to create a high effort video. And it worked. That video went viral and pushed her over that monetization threshold. So I'm not sure what lessons we should take from that. Also, she did have a pretty successful channel before. This new channel is just her switching niches. The next example is what truly inspired me. Silver and Solo is not trying to be a YouTube guru like many of the others are. Her videos aren't about becoming a successful YouTuber. When she started the challenge, her channel was about seven months old. She had less than a hundred subscribers and only about 30 videos. But it worked. She became monetized well before the 90 day mark. I was intrigued. Does this really work? I started searching for people who try this challenge but fail. And I couldn't find very many people. You'd think there'd be hundreds of failed attempts out there. The fact that I can't find many could be good or could be bad. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments if you find some. The one or two I did find was pretty clear why they failed. They just gave up. I don't mean they skipped a few weeks or were late with a few videos. I mean they just disappeared. So of course they didn't succeed. You can't succeed at YouTube if you quit YouTube. <laughs> I think it's encouraging that I can't find many fails. But it could be because YouTube is just isn't showing them to me. Or maybe the YouTuber was just so embarrassed they deleted their videos. We really can't be sure. I did find examples of people who are in the middle of their challenge. And they're usually doing well. Like Drew Higgins here. Will he make it by the 90 day deadline? We can't be sure, but I like his odds. I've got to try it out for myself. I'm curious. I promise not to give up before the 90 days are over. And if I fail, I promise to leave the videos up so future YouTubers will know. Right now, I have 525 subscribers and 2687 watch hours. So I'm halfway there. I've been a YouTube creator for about six months and I've uploaded 39 videos. Let's see what the next 90 days will be like. Starting with this video, I'll upload a progress video once a week. Since today is Thursday, I'll upload a weekly update every Thursday. So let the journey begin.